Good afternoon, children, again. I'm going to read another story. Nana Janet is going to read you The Ogre's Bride while I'm waiting for the other story I just read to upload because it'll be done in 15 minutes. The short stories don't take as long. So we're reading from this book and it's called, I haven't read this before, The Ogre's Bride by Julie Anna Horatio Gatti Ewing. There was once an ogre who kept a whole town in the grip of fear without anyone daring to challenge him. That's what an ogre is, they're bad men, bad, bad, bad men. Over the years, the ogre had become very rich and although he had huge cellars full of gold and jewels and big barns groaning with the weight of stolen goods. So he was a thief. The richer he grew, the more greedy he became. What he took from the people was not their biggest worry. Even to be killed and eaten by him was not what they feared most. The worst was this, he would keep getting married and he only liked short wives and his wives always died very soon. He always needed new ones. Some said he tormented his wives. Some said he ate them. This is ghastly, isn't it? Others said he worked them to death. The ogre only cared for two things in a woman. For her to be little and a good housewife. Sounds like a pig, doesn't it? Now it was when the ogre had just lost his 24th wife. 24 wives, oh dear that these two qualities were joined in the daughter of a certain poor farmer. Everybody felt sure that managing Molly must now be married to the ogre. And sure enough, the giant came to the farmer and wanted to take Molly. The farmer did not know what to say and the ogre invited himself to supper at the farm later that week. Managing Molly was not distressed at the news. Do what I ask you and say as I say, said she to her father. First, he fetched a large number of hares and then a barrel of white wine on which he spent every penny he had. On the day of the ogre's visit, Molly made a delicious hare stew and the wine barrel was set near the table. When the ogre came, Molly served the stew and the ogre sat down, his head just touching the kitchen rafters. The stew was perfect and there was plenty of it. The ogre was very pleased and said politely, I'm afraid, my dear, that you have been put to great trouble and expense. Don't mention it, said Molly. The fewer rats there are, the more corn. How do you cook them? Not one of my wives have ever cooked them said the ogre, and he thought to himself, such a delicious stew out of rats? What a housewife! This wine must have cost you a great deal, neighbour, said he, drinking to the farmer. I don't know that rotten apples could be better used, said the farmer, but I leave all that to Molly. The ogre was now in a hurry to arrange the match and asked what the farmer would pay. I should never dream of paying for someone to take Molly, 
said the father boldly. In fact, I shall expect payment from whoever takes her. The ogre named a large sum of money, but the farmer told him to double it. Angrily, he named a larger sum, which the farmer agreed to. Bring it in a sack tomorrow morning, said he to the ogre, and then you can speak to Molly. The next morning, the ogre appeared carrying a sack and Molly came to meet him. There are two things, said she, I would ask of any husband of mine, a new farmhouse and a feather bed of fresh goose feathers filled when the old woman plucks her geese. So to save the expense of labor, the ogre built it himself and worked hard under Molly's orders. Now for the feather bed, said Molly, when it snows, they say the old woman up in the sky is plucking her geese. And so at the first snowstorm, Molly sent for the ogre. You see the feathers falling, said she. Fill the bed with them. The ogre carried in shovelfuls of snow to the bed. But as it melted as fast as he put it in, his labour never seemed done. Towards night, the room got so cold that the snow would not melt and the bed was soon filled. Molly hastily covered it with sheets and blankets and said, pray rest here tonight and tell me if the bed is not comfort itself. Tomorrow we will be married. So the ogre lay down on the bed he had filled, but do what he could, he could not get warm. The sheets must be damp, said he, and in the morning he woke up with horrible pains that he could hardly move, and half the bed had melted away. It's no use, he groaned. She's a very managing woman, but to sleep on such a bed would be the death of me. And he went off home as quickly as he could before Molly could call upon him to be married. <laughs> That's the end of that one, children. That is really lovely, isn't it funny? Yeah, she was clever, wasn't she? Molly was really clever. She really did trick him. <laughs> all right, bye-bye. Love you all. God bless. Bye-bye. Read another one soon.